guys, welcome once again to Cooking with Charles. I'm your host, Charles. And what do I always say when you're cooking with Charles? You're cooking with good looking. All right, folks, listen, we are pressed for time tonight. We got another show coming in right after me in just a little while. So to help expedite things, I've already drank half the wine. Mm. So I'm nice and lubed up for tonight's show. Also, I'm not going Michael Jackson on you. This glove is because we don't have a sink here. So I've been cutting up some of tonight's meat. And what is our meat tonight? Well, it is this lovely thing right here. That's pheasant. Our uh, control booth operator, Dave, did some hunting, got a couple of nice pheasants. We're gonna freaking see those up tonight. So first and foremost, let's, uh, let's get going right over here. We got the pan's heating. In this pan right here, I am going to turn this down to simmer now. This is Israeli couscous. Remember I said last time we're gonna use this a little bit? Um, well, we're going to use this tonight uh, underneath our fricassee. Okay, so what are we going to do first? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our breast meat here. Look, how, look at this, guys. Look at the color on this, huh? Is this not beautiful or what? Look at that. This is scrumptious. Pheasant, those that don't know, is a, one of the most popular game birds there is. Okay, now... And it's very small, very small. One pheasant gives you about a pound at best. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take all this breast meat. We are just going to, whoa, we're popping all over the place. We're just going to lightly brown this on each side. Put that back in here. You know what? I'm just gonna put it all in there and pop and be damned. Why are we doing that? Well, we wanna get a little sear to all the sides. This will help lock in some of the gamey flavor that we love of this dish. Okay, Whew, that mm, smells really good. Folks, if you don't like gamey tasting meat, but you want to try pheasant and you're a little, little uneasy about it, or you're not quite sure, soak it in buttermilk for about 24 hours. Um, that goes for any game meats, like uh, venison. Uh, that will take some of the gaminess out of it. That will also help tenderize it. The proteins from the fats will help tenderize that meat. So it won't be as tough, because one thing about game meats is they are tough because there's no fat in them. These guys are running around everywhere in the, the, um, in the forest for their lives. They don't have the luxury of being fed like a chicken you buy in the store. All right, while well, that is doing that right now, I'm just gonna rough chop up some baby carrots. Doesn't have to be pretty, we're doing a fricassee. This is something the uh, hunters of yesteryear might have done out in the woods as they were hunting with their freshly dressed bird. Get that going right in there. We got some celery going next. And folks, I am using the celery leaves on this because these have a lot of flavor. Um, you might even wanna take the whole head when you buy this in the store, save these, add them to a salad. It is wonderful. Okay, so. In those go, green pepper. Again, I'm just doing a rough chop. We're doing a really easy, quick dish. Done, let's look at our couscous for a second. Gonna turn that up a little more, we want that to simmer. That will take a little while. And let's throw in about a half an onion. So what do we have in here? Well, we got probably three quarters to half a, half a pound to uh, three quarters of uh, meat, breast meat from the pheasant. We're gonna use about a cup of carrots, about a cup of celery, 
half a green pepper. You can use a red pepper, yellow pepper, whatever kind of pepper you want. And we're just going to rough chop up half a medium sized yellow onion. See how quick we're going? See, it's political season here at GTV. Uh, when we're taping this, the election is, well, about two weeks away. So <clears throat> everybody's coming in here to use their public access to have their voice heard. So go for it. God bless America, guys. Cooking, however, we know no politics. Voila. Now, I'm going to use a chicken stock on this. However, I would recommend using a pheasant stock, but we don't have a pheasant stock. If you ever have a hunter in your life who has pheasant and they cut the meat, they give it to you, or even if they don't, ask them to save you the bones, the giblets. Giblets meaning like the heart, the liver, the kidneys, the neck. Um, you can make a stock very easily in about an hour. You have that pheasant stock. You could use that when you make chicken. You know, so uh, we're using chicken stock with our pheasant tonight. But when next time you make chicken, use a pheasant stock. It's going to give it a depth of flavor that you'll be very, very pleased with. Okay, those are softening up a little bit right there. That's the breast meat. This I've already taken the uh, trouble of. Putting these in the skewers, and what are they? Well, these, my friend, is the leg meat. The leg meat on a pheasant is extremely tough. Um, I would even consider, if I was grilling that up by itself, letting that sit overnight in buttermilk to help soften it up. Because you got to realize, as I said, these guys are running around the forest. They don't fly. They run. But you know what? You wrap up the uh, leg meat in bacon. Why? Because everything tastes better with a bacon. So we're just going to place those right on there. All right. Let's check out our couscous. Looking good, looking good. OK. I think we're ready for this, guys. Comes all of our meat. Right in there. What I'm also going to add is a little bit of water, which is the brine from our whole mushrooms. Right there. Let all that come up to temp. I have here a nice sprig of fresh thyme and fresh oregano that I'm going to place right on top. And homemade chicken stock, folks. You know what's in here? Chicken. Chicken parts. Nothing else. Nothing else. Let that sit for one second. Get to these before they burn. Mmm. Again, folks, smell vision would be your friend right now because this studio smells delicious. All right. Now, this natural chicken stock that I made, well, it's made from a store-bought chicken, not a free-range, hormone-free chicken. That's fine. But I made the broth out of a bunch of boneless split breasts I've been buying, putting the carcasses in the oven, saving a little bit of skin, saving a little bit of the chicken grease. When I had four, I made a chicken stock. Why? Well, it's a chicken stock you find in the store. This is reduced sodium. But however, what are the ingredients? Salt, dextrose, hydrolyzed weak gluten, monosodium glumate, and about 20 other things. So I started thinking, why am I using that when it's so easy to make a chicken stock? And it truly is. So we have our chicken stock here. We're going to put this on high, bring it to a boil. Oh, get back in there, mushroom. And we are going to simmer this for about 20 minutes. But I'm going to add to that all these chicken bones. I mean chicken bones. <laughs> Pheasant bones. Because what that's going to do is that's going to let some of the, by simmering these with this, a lot of that marrow in the bone is going to escape and it's going to add a lot of flavor. Now I get about a cup and a half 
of chicken stock, and that chicken stock that I made is really condensed. So I'm adding about another cup of water, and if needed, I got more water right here. And I'm actually going to add a little bit more. And once that starts boiling, I'm going to put that down to a simmer. And then it's just pretty much a waiting game. All right, this is coming along nicely. Voila, let's see how these are doing. Bacon's great, guys. <laughs> you know, I was talking to a vegetarian at work, and uh, she was saying that she's a vegetarian, however, when she breaks down, it's for bacon. Because let's be honest, bacon does make everything taste better. Mm. All right, folks, right now we're going to take a little break as all this stuff comes together. But before we take a break, I want to show you a couple of pictures of where we got this pheasant. All right, first picture. Here's a picture of Dave. He's our dude in the control booth. Look at him. He is our fearless hunter. And now we have the true fearless hunter, the dog. That's right. This is the true hunter. And oh, here it is. Lastly, here is fearless hunter Dave pretending he got the pheasant that the dog actually went in and got for him. He's holding that bird up high. So that's where it's from, folks. Listen, come right back. We're going to take about two minutes, and uh, well, then we'll be back. So we'll see you in a bit. We could not do this show without the help of our friends at Sully's Superette. Since 1987, Sully's has provided the area with the best meats around. Here at Cooking with Charles, we not only count on them for their kind donations of meat, but John and the gang at Sully's also provide us with the best produce, deli items, and libations that make Cooking with Charles the huge success it is. From all of us at Cooking with Charles, thank you. I've teamed up with the Goffstown Network to tell you about their outreach and food pantry programs. The mission of the Goffstown Network is to provide for the hunger-related needs of our neighbors in Goffstown and their surrounding communities. Founded with the governing principles that no person should go hungry and every person deserves our care. The Goffstown Network serves the area by providing food and other services on an emergency short-term basis. This spirit of community and mutual caring is extended to anyone in Goffstown, Dunbarton, and New Boston. Normal hours of operation are Wednesday evenings, 6 to 8 p.m., and Saturday mornings, 10 a.m. to noon. Now, you can, you can also assist them through donations of time, food, or money. Like the help they give, the help they receive is also greatly appreciated. You can reach them by calling the number on your screen or by stopping by the Parish House of St. Matthew's Church. It's located in downtown Goffstown at 7 North Mass Street, right across from Sully's. Folks, welcome back. We are still simmering away, bowling away over here. Uh, you know what? We've had the white. Now it's time for the red. So, folks, uh, this red, we went from a Chardonnay to a Shiraz. A CH to an SH. Okay, right over here we got some bread going. I got some Parisian-style bread. I just put a slather of butter and a smear of pesto onto each piece. That's going to be our little starch tonight on the side. Now, I got to tell you, folks, bacon wrapped around anything it makes it good. Mmm. This is awesome though. Even if you take the bacon off of this, these are cut small enough. Mmm. Mmm. So good. And the bacon is like frosting on a chocolate marble cake. Mmm. Those are delicious. Let's see how we're doing over here. We are actually. Doing really good over here. We can keep boiling down, simmering down, boiling down if we want to. Um, it's up to you however long you want to do it. At this point, you could even take a quarter cup of water and a little bit of flour, uh, flour, tablespoon or so, mix that in or cornstarch, and then add it to this. Um, you add it to the water first instead of putting it right in there. That way, the flour won't clump up. But this 
Mm. Smells great. We have the aromatics of oh, everything in here. Mm. So good. Let's see right here. That's our oregano and thyme. And these are the bones. And I want to bring this over here. And I'm going to grab me a fork. And I just want to see, because yeah, this meat is falling off the bone. Mmm. Oh. Pheasant has a very light, delicate flavor. Very slightly gamey. I really don't think if you're ever squeamish about having your game meat, you don't even have to soak it in buttermilk if you don't. You know, that's just a faint of heart. They're really faint of heart. Mmm. And if you're watching the show, sorry, can't talk with my mouth full all the time. Mmm. Oh, that burned a little bit too. But if you're a fan of the show, you like to eat. So, let's see how this is going. That's going very nicely right in there. We are going to just turn that to high, because you know what? I'm ready for the final stages over here. Now, as I can't figure out if I want white or red some nights when I do the show, I couldn't, I couldn't make a decision on brandy or sherry to add to the fricassee. Mmm, sherry smells great as a flavor, not as a drink though. Brandy, however, yeah, you know what? I think I'll go with the brandy. Mmm, ah, cap full for me. And two tablespoons for the pheasant. See, folks, that's how we do it here on Cooking with Charles. Paula Dean may do shots of butter. I do brandy. I'm sorry. Anybody can do a shot of butter. <laughs> oh, it burns, though. Oh, it burns. <laughs> All right. We're going to give this a quick stir. And I think we're done. I'm going to check this out here. Let me just start by uh, pulling out some of these bones. Again, we put the bones in there to help release some of the marrow, impart more flavor to it. Um, if you folks have any hunters in your life, this being hunting season, even if you don't get the meat from your buddy down the street that hunts the deer, hunts the moose, hunts the bear, whatever they hunt, um, in this case pheasant, always asking for the bones, especially the knuckles for a larger animal, the heart, the neck, pretty much that giblet bag that you get, uh, kidneys, liver, all that stuff you get when you pull it out of the carcass of a turkey at Thanksgiving. You want that because you can make a stock. You add about a cup or two of water, you boil it down, a cup or two of water, you boil it down till it gets nice and thick. It should only take you 20 minutes for a quick stock, a couple of hours for a more complex stock. But either way, you have that. You can freeze that, you can reuse that. Uh, case in point, as I said earlier, if I had pheasant stock, I could use that with my chicken dishes. And it's so easy to make and it keeps in the freezer. It's kind of a no-brainer. If you had venison stock, God, you could add that to so many things that call for a beef stock. Or even chicken. Stock's a stock. All right, folks. Here we go. Let me just get some couscous. Now, I'm using the pearl Israeli style couscous, which is the big ball couscous. And I will save you from the big ball jokes and the texture of big balls in your mouth, blah, 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 because I've already done those jokes. But this is a macaroni product, so it's a pasta. And it works great for so many things. And next week, I will make this into a, another side dish because it's my new favorite thing. And I told you I would, a side dish of a macaroni and cheese. All right, so all we're going to do is we are going to take, wow, oh, a couple of pieces of the stew. All right, folks, let's just 
Get some sauce on here. Now again, you could thicken this up with flour, but really the flour is not going to add any flavor to this. It's that homemade chicken stock. You know, add a little bit of water. I might add a little too much water, but I was going to err on the side of caution for this dish. And I've got carrots, onions, and peppers. I did put in a touch of garlic while we were on break. A little bit of pepper, but no salt. I'm trying to make things without salt because as you can see, there's salt in everything. Um, this one cup of salt is 24, per one cup of this has 24% of your daily allowance of sodium. That's a lot. This bacon that we're eating with this little piece of goodness, mm, boatloads of salt in that. All right, let's get a nice good close up on this. Mmm, look at that. That is a hearty stew like meal. Great for the winter. Uh, let's see. Let's see how it tastes. Oh, perfect, guys. Mmm. It's almost like a chicken soup on steroids. Because of the flavor that the pheasant brings to the table. This is wonderful. Mm. Although, because this was a salt free meal, this is what I like about making things without salt. You can add your own. Personally, I just want a little bit, not a whole lot. And my bread. Almost forgot about that. Thank you very much, Dave. He's like standing up, pointing over. <laughs> oh, beautiful. We saved it. Whew. It was touch and go for a while, but we saved her. All right. We are just going to take this out and put that to the side. Thank you, Dave. Not only is he a world-class hunter, but he's also a world-class bread saver. This bite's for you, Dave. Mm. Mm. As always, folks, give yourself a toast for lasting through one more episode. Email me your questions, concerns, and comments at cookingwithcharles at gmail.com. And if you want to see this show again and it's past the viewing time on GTV Channel 16, go to my channel on YouTube, Cooking with Charles. It's now Cooking with Charles! Exclamation point. But anyway, just keep cooking. And remember, when you're cooking with Charles, you're a cook with good looking. We'll see you next week. Oh, must have some bread.